So I'd like to uh, thank you guys for coming out. Uh, today we're doing a, a quick demonstration of a PNID with SolarWorks Electrical. My name is Stephen Darcy, Applications Engineer at Go Engineer. Uh, on the line, we also have uh, Mallory Becker. She's going to be our Q&A uh, Applications Engineer. And then we have uh, Melanie Gavura, and she's going to be any any questions for uh, costing or pricing, things like that. Uh, you can also add those to the uh, Q&A. She'll be able to help you with that. There's gonna be three different uh, packages that we're gonna be uh, playing with today. Uh, SolidWorks Electrical Schematic Pro, which is kind of the 2D, uh, SolidWorks Electrical 3D, and then SolidWorks Premium with the, uh, the routing add-in. All right, so some of the topics we're gonna be doing is uh, the P&ID schematics, talk about the wire styles, uh, which are going to be pipe styles in the PNID PNID way. Uh, we'll insert some 3D parts on the SolarWorks side, route some of the pipes, do some of the pneumatics on the schematic side, and then route the schematics or route the pneumatics on the 3D side. So it should be pretty fun. All right, I've got a uh, a little poll to to launch real quick. So if you guys could answer these real quick, just some Quick little question on uh, what you guys are currently using, napkin sketches or SolidWorks Electrical, AutoCAD or anything else. So I'll let that go for a second. So we got a couple people coming in. All right, we got a couple votes in. All right, I want to thank you for your res responses on that. All right, so now uh, now for the fun part, uh, on to the demo. So this is SolidWorks Electrical Schematic. And uh, for the most part, I have you know, just some lines and symbols and things like that. So if you're familiar with AutoCAD, uh, this is, should be very similar to uh, to look and feel of AutoCAD. Uh, we do have kind of the draw toolbar for creating geometry, modified toolbar for trimming, extending, scaling, and all that. So those commands are still there, but then we have a, a very unique interface for, you know, helping you create your drawings and stuff faster. So if you're on a schematic, uh, it's going to give you tools. 90% of your tools are going to be already on this uh, toolbar. So uh, one of the first things I want to do is go ahead and add in a, uh, a symbol. And so we could use the insert symbol or we can go, I like using this little search tool over here. I'm just going to type in a pump. And I've got to click in the box before I type. There we go. So there's a whole bunch of symbols. Uh, a lot of the symbols are already included. So you could use the generic ones, you know, the, the, the standards straight out of the box. Um, or you can, of course, copy them and create your own. So if you have some custom symbols, it's totally doable. Uh, on the 2D schematic uh, webinar earlier, uh, this was, was covered. All right, so I'm gonna put a, a pump in here. So that looks pretty good place to put it. Um, I've already got a schematic for my pump number two. So I'm going to link this pump to that, that same pump. And I don't see it in there. I think it may be in the heat exchanging location, heat exchanger location. So there it is P2. And you can see there it is on one of my other sheets. So that when we did the electrical schematic, um, I want to make sure it's the same part number, same, same description, same manufacturer, all that, linking it to the same component. All right, so we'll say okay, and I'll just escape out of that. Now, one of the only, I'm not even gonna say it's that different, but uh, when we're routing pipes, I, I'm not really doing wires. So let's take a look at our wire styles. So in the wire style manager, you'll see I've got my electrical uh, wires and stuff like that. And we've got some you know, multi multi-wire lines. Um, but we can also have hydraulic and pneumatic lines. So if I need some high pressure hoses or fittings or pipe, then I can have high and low. I can 
change the color, you know, look at the properties on these things and set what the uh, diameters and and the bin, minimum bin radius if it's a hose on some of those things. Uh, for the most part, I, I created one uh, PI work, it's hydraulic. And uh, for the most part, you know, this is kind of where my water is going to be going in and out of. And uh, this is, for the most part, on the mechanical side, it's going to be two inch PVC. So another thing that's important is the way that we're going to uh, do the numbering on this. So I'm doing wire numbering. So each pipe's going to have, you know, pipe one, pipe two, pipe three. And I'm putting the display to where it's on each side of that. So we'll see that in just a bit. All right. And with that, we'll just draw a single wire. And you may need a little browse and make sure that you're, you know, playing with the right pipe line. So I'll select that. And then for the most part, uh, we do have connection points on those things. So I can actually go past it if I need to. And then we want to right click to finish out. You'll see it automatically trims off at that connection point. So let's put one more symbol in, or one more uh, line, and we'll connect it over to that. And then this storage tank, you could create a custom symbol if you have the right amount of flanges and everything on it. Uh, in this case, I actually used a black box. Uh, occasionally, out in the field, you may actually uh, cut off a flange and then you know patch it up, or you may add another hole in the tank for a new flange. And so the black box is a little bit more convenient because it's it's very, um, we'll just say flexible. So we'll just update that. Now I have a new, you know, kind of flange coming out to that. If I actually wanted to add the flange components, then of course I'd just insert the symbol to that. Uh, for now, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let's put a valve in. I'm gonna use the same little find feature and go find a valve. There's a lot of valves in here. You'll see uh, some of these, Symbols are uh, for pneumatics, so there's a lot of them in there. And I want to find, I've got this pretty large valve, it's a hand valve, and there it is right there. So I'm just going to double click on it, drag and drop it in. And then this valve uh, is actually going to be a new valve, so notice it's doing a valve number V12 right there, so it's creating a new one. And then uh, I do want to uh, go ahead and assign it some manufacturing information. So I'm gonna go over to that tab and I'll do a search. And you'll notice down here, it's looking for, uh, the valve has an in and an out. So it's looking for, you know, an in and, I need to find a manufacturer and part information that actually has an in and an out. And it's red right now, so it's not, it's not fulfilled yet. So when I select, same thing, I've got red over here. When I pick on the manufacturing information, now you'll see it turns green. That means that this has the properties that the actual circuits and terminals are looking for. So in this case, I pretty much just have an in, in, in and out. All right, on uh, valves that have multiple openings, this, this will be a little bit more uh, meaningful. All right, so we just add that, select it, say okay. So now I've got my valve in there. I've got my pipe, you know, going from the tank to the pump, and then the pump's gotta go over to this other tank heat exchanger, and then, you know, do, do some other stuff. All right, so let's take a look at this on the uh, the 3D side. So here's SolidWorks uh, 2022, and if I go to my add-ins, then you'll notice that I have uh, SolidWorks routing is turned on, and I also have SolidWorks electrical turned on. So those are the two add-ins that I'm using inside of SolidWorks. So with the electrical add-in, you get this uh, little lightning bolt for electrical. And electrical is, of course, multi-user friendly. So the red project means that I already have it open in 2D. So I'm just gonna go ahead and double click on it and open it up. It says, hey, it's already opened up by somebody else. SL Darcy is using it. So I'm fine with that. And you see, I, I get the exact same information that's on the, uh, uh, as far as the drawings and the books on the on the other one. So the controller PNID is already open. If I need to uh, reference that, I can of course double click on it and kind of take a look at that. I should have hit the save button, so I'd see my line in there. There we go. There we go. So now I have my new line in there. So I get the uh, the valve and I need to route this thing up. I need to do it in 3D. 
Well, in my project, I actually have the, uh, the top level assembly. So let's open that up. This is a fairly decent assembly, so it may take it a little bit of time. All right, and if you came to some of the uh, the previous webinars, uh, you can kind of see that, we'll wait for it to open up. Uh, we did some of the routing of the wires and some of the cables. And so you'll see these uh, in this assembly. So this is kind of part three, a three-part series. And this is the last one. There we go. It's got to do its little check for the electrical. All right, so you can kind of see that uh, all I did is close the door and hit route wires and it uh, rerouted the wires. And then the wires come out of the uh, terminal strips going into the cables and the cables are going into the motors. So I've got those all going. So now what I need to do is work on some of the, uh, the, the hydraulics. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hit tab just to hide this wall temporarily. And we're gonna play with this connection from the uh, the motor to the tank first. And before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on uh, the connection points, the routing points. So give that a second to rebuild, there we go. And then uh, it's really just doing a lot of routing, uh, but we do get some of the uh, ability to link some of the information uh, with this SOLIDWORKS electrical manager. So in this case, for the most part, I'm working in the uh, the little heat exchanger here. So here we go. I'm just going to right click on the uh, the C point, and I'm just going to say start route. I'm just going to use this uh, subassembly. It's going to be a two inch pipe, and I'm going to use short radius elbows. So out of that connection point, it's gonna make what's called a, a route stub. So I'm gonna do the same thing off of this C point, just add it to the route. And I'm gonna hide the uh, floor just to make it a little bit easier. And then these are actually just lines. I'm actually in a uh, 3D sketch, so I can just drag the lines out. It's gonna make the, uh, the, the pipes a little bit longer. And the cool thing about this is it just is a, a, a 3D sketch. So I can use 3D sketch tools. So if I need these to connect together, you just pick on them, do a merge. And then because it's smart, it's gonna automatically put the elbow in, whatever the short radius elbow is, and uh, create that. And when I finish out of the sketch, then you'll notice it'll, it'll switch over from a 3D sketch to individual components. So this is actually a piece of pipe. This over here is a piece of pipe and it actually put an elbow in, which of course is gonna be a purchase part and uh, it lines them all up according to that 3D sketch. So pretty cool way to do it. I'm gonna go ahead and switch my units real quick. Uh, if we need to add components, then I can just say edit the route, which puts me back into the 3D sketch. And then if I need to add, say for instance, that, uh, that new valve, uh, this valve number 12 right here, uh, you know, I put it in on the 2D side and this does have some properties. So there, there are some things that you have to do kind of a, ahead of time is for this manufacturer part, we do tell it where to go find this SOLIDWORKS part file. So, you know, if I'm going to insert it as a schematic, then it's gonna go find this 2D block. If I'm gonna insert it into 3D, this is a SOLIDWORKS part file, it's gonna automatically drag and drop it, this part, into the into the assembly and that's that's kind of the whole thing once you set these uh libraries up then you can do this stuff very quickly i don't have to go look for it so you know this is on the 2d side all i got to do is just right click and insert it's going to go find that part and because i'm ready uh, editing the route i can just plop it along that line it's going to automatically line up along the line and then i do have the option i could have done it with uh, the tab key. Now, if I need to uh, put a dimension or something specifically as far as how long that 
piece of pipe is, then I can, you know, put a dimension in there and it'll move it along that route. So pretty cool. And then again, I finished out of the route. Now it's going to uh, break this up into multiple pipe sections here. And then uh, it also creates a subassembly where this thing kind of lives on its own. So if I need to, I can open it up in its own window. So there it is. With the uh, the routing add-in, uh, we do have the ability to do a, a pipe, what's called a pipe drawing. Let me go ahead and save that real quick. So we'll do a pipe drawing. Um, I like uh, B size landscape, so I'm gonna use that template. And I'll just accept the defaults. So I'll just say, okay. So it'll automatically size it. Uh, I don't, I, I should have created a, a, a template, a bill of material template for it. I'm just gonna use the default. So it may have an extra couple columns in here, but typically I would make one specifically for my piping. I'm just gonna delete those columns. Let's go ahead and just drag that to the top. And it created the view. It automatically put the uh, the balloons on it. It put the uh, the lengths of each of the different pipe segments out there. So it is automated, so it may not be pretty. You may have to do you know a little bit of work in here. Maybe that three is actually for the uh, the piece of tube out there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put that over here, make it on three. So these are smart balloons. If if you drag it off the component, it doesn't know what what the heck. That's there's nothing there. So we'll put it on there. That looks good. And a uh, pretty simple drawing. So I'm just gonna hit the save button. You know, I've maybe picked maybe six or seven things. So I'm gonna go ahead and just save that. And then something that we can do in 2022 uh, and some previous ones is uh, maybe I wanna add this drawing to my, my project. So under tools, SolidWorks Electrical, I'm just gonna say create project drawing. Since I have this drawing open, it knows that it's gonna add this drawing to that. So it successfully did it, say okay. And you'll see it over here is number 11 in the top level. Now, this is my P and ID one, so I'll probably drag it down to uh, my, my book number two down here in just a bit. But it is now added to the project, so that's pretty cool. All right, so let's go ahead and close out of that. We'll get back into the... Uh, the pipe here. So I'm done with this section. Um, I have one more section that I need to, to do. So, you know, this was the line going into the pump. Now the pump has to go over to the other uh, heat exchanger, which is over on this, this uh, area over here. So let's go ahead and kind of do the same thing. I'm just gonna right click, start a route. It's gonna create a, a pipe stub. So I'll just accept the defaults on that. All right, there's my pipe stub. Uh, so again, I can just drag that up if I need to. I want to uh, connect it over to this one. So I'm gonna right click on that C point, say add to route. Same thing, I get a little pipe stub. If I need to drag it out, I can. And if I want this to be a certain length, then I can dimension it. Um, well, unfortunately, I didn't change my, my units. Let me change my units real quick. And that is going to exit me out of the sketch. So I'm going to, you'll notice that the pipes, it does create an actual piece of pipe hollowed out and everything. All right, so now I'll put a dimension on it. Um, I get 11 inches, that should be good. And we do have the ability when we're doing uh, these segments for the the computer to automatically do it for us, so the program. So I'm gonna say auto route and just select on the two components or the two ends of the pipes. And then it's gonna automatically route that. And it will give you some, if it's more complicated, it'll give you alternate paths. Uh, but in this case, that's that's all I need right there. 
and then there is blue in the 3D sketch, so if it needs to, I don't want it going through my, my part there. And let's go and drag it up a little bit more. And there's kind of a cool, uh, unique feature that when I add dimensions, so if I just go to my sketch and do a smart dimension, I'm going to pick on that line, but then I'll also pick on the space of this uh, Unistrut. I got to pick the smart dimension button first. And there we go. There we go. And you'll notice what it'll do. I'm going to make this a uh, 0.625. And it's not actually going to the center line. It's actually going to the outside of the piece of pipe. So it's kind of cool that you're actually dimensioning it to a face and it's taking into account the outside of that piece of pipe. So don't have to do anything crazy for that really good tool for making sure pipes stay away from other pipes and things like that. All right, so that looks pretty good. Uh, but I noticed that I didn't put a valve in here. So let me finish out of the sketch real quick. And uh, I, I needed to put a valve in and I can do this on the 3D side uh, as well as on the 2D side. So I'm gonna go into my, uh, uh, this is actually going over into uh, the heat exchanger. So I'm gonna just add a component. I know what the manufacturer part is, so I'm gonna use that option. So give that a second to come up. And I've checked the box for uh, auto refresh. So I'm gonna uncheck that. It'll make it a little quicker. And I'm looking for a valve. So there we go, that same uh, V100, I'm just gonna add that and select it. And I only wanna put in one, so that's fine. So notice it put a, a V13. I do have the uh, the permanence. If you've been to training, you may know what this permanent symbol is. And uh, it's you know not out here in the, uh, in the model yet, uh, but it is a V13. It does have properties. So if I do wanna tell it that this is a, under the description, maybe it's a maintenance valve. I'm an engineer, I don't know if I spelled that right, but now it's a maintenance valve. All right, uh, before I put this in though, I gotta make sure that I'm editing the route. So I'm just gonna right click on the piece of pipe, tell it to edit the route. It's gonna take me again back into the uh, the 3D sketch. So zoom in down there, and then all I have to do is insert. It's gonna go find that from the library, and then I'll just plop that one in. It's gonna divide up the lines, and everything should be good to go. So we'll finish out of the route. It's gonna create all my pieces of pipe. And then I could do the same thing. I could go in, create a drawing for this, uh, this pipe section if I need to, add it to the project, and uh, keep going. All right, let's go ahead and turn on my uh, worn uh, wall and the floor. So that's looking pretty good. So I'm pretty much done on the, the piping side. I've created a new valve in this line. So let's, uh, let's go take a look at the 2D side. So on the 2D side, uh, look at my components list and under my heat exchanger, you'll see I have my maintenance valve here now, uh, but it hasn't been inserted on the 2D side. So same thing, I can right click on here, just say insert symbol. And because the manufacturing information, I told it where to go find that symbol, I don't have to go browse for it or anything like that. So uh, just drop it in. And then maybe I wanna do some, some more work on this. Uh, let's, uh, before I do wire numbering, I wanna make sure I've got this thing going to the boiler and I do have a drawing for the boiler. So there's my boiler drawing. And I want those lines to be connected. So we do have origin destination arrows. I'll pick on that. And let me switch these. Let's go to the previous drawing here, previous drawing here. Oops, let's go, there we go. And I'll just do a single insertion. And as long as the wire styles, or in this case, the pipe styles are the same, then it can connect those two up. So now I can do some of the tools. If I decide to change this from a two inch to a three inch line, you know, 
if I change it on this sheet, it's going to automatically update. And I can use the little go to. Uh, it'll automatically update this pipe style on this, this sheet. So some very good tools in SOLIDWORKS Electrical Schematic for that. All right, now that I've got that done, let's go ahead and do some automation on the uh, the wire numbers. So let's go ahead and number the new wires. So there we go, we got some new, uh, or lines, some pipes in here. So that looks pretty good. Uh, we can also, we maybe I wanna hide the, uh, the wire marks, but I want to show the equal potential label. So you can kind of see it automatically kind of trims out behind that. Uh, we can add some single, uh, signal information to that, the equal potential properties. So if I wanted to say it's PVC, then I can add that and it'll put that on there as a label. Um, I could also add that in the wire information. So if it just said two inch PVC, I could do that at the wire style level. And then, you know, I wouldn't have to create that for the signal. So a couple of different ways. It's very flexible on how you guys are working. We can we can make sure that it works that that way. All right, uh, that's pretty much all with the uh, the larger pipes and stuff. Let's go to some pneumatics. So I've got a, uh, a schematic for that. So we'll just double click on that. And you'll see I've got a, high, uh, a pneumatic cylinder. So it's gonna push something in and out or turn some, a valve on and off or something. And uh, it's done with air. And so they're going through some of these valves. So got three uh, in and out and then a, a pilot, so they're they're connected, and they're coming back to this little T section, so right before it goes to the cylinder, it's got this little uh, kind of a bleed off for the pilot, and then uh, it's controlled by this uh, five-step uh, valve, and it also has a exhaust, an exhaust A and an exhaust B coming out, and I've custom made some of these symbols, um, they, we buy this thing from McMaster Car, and so we were able to find the 3D model, but it didn't have a 2D schematic. So I just kind of made something that looks similar to it. And then kind of same thing, you insert the symbol, you give it some component properties, you give it a manufacturer and uh, some of the properties on that. And again, you, you tell it where on the 3D side, you know, where are we gonna insert that 3D part? Where do I go find that? And I probably should have added this schematic for that on, on this as well. All right, and uh, actually everything comes in. Uh, we have our line coming in. It's going through the uh, uh, the regulator and then out of the regulator going into the valve, the five port valve, and then that's handling all the controls for everything. So let's take a look at uh, this on the 3D side. There we go. So I've put all the components uh, for the pneumatics underneath here. And I'm gonna put everything pretty much uh, on this wall. You'll see I've already created um, the cylinder, the cylinders out there. So I just need to put the rest of the components out there. So again, it's, it's very easy. I just right click and say insert. It's gonna go find that part in the library. Uh, I did add some mate references onto some of these. So as I drag and drop it, it can automatically uh, snap to, in this case, the back of this wall. So it's gonna automatically put this little mate on there. So all I gotta do is say, okay. So now that part is linked to my 2D. And then uh, from there, I need to uh, put in my uh, I think it's V11, this is my big valve. There we go. Yep, that's it. So we'll put that one in. Again, it's putting the mate reference on there. Uh, then I need two of the uh, the smaller valves. So it's going to be my V3 and V5. So I'm going to insert them. Same thing. We'll go ahead and put this one on on that face. Uh, I would do want to stack these two valves together to make it a little bit cleaner. So my uh, V5, I'm actually just going to put this out in the middle of nowhere. That looks great.
And then I do have the uh, the mufflers, Z1 and Z2. And they actually go in on the underside of this thing. And again, these are uh, from McMaster Car. So all I had to do is download them, put them in the library, and then added uh, C points if I needed to. Uh, but in this case, I really just needed the, uh, they're going to screw directly into there. So I just needed the mate reference. So when I go to insert this, give that a second to come up. Uh, if I get close to any of these circular faces, it'll try and automatically stick to them. So all I got to do is get close to this little edge and plop it in. So there's one. And you'll see I put the mate reference at the thread engagement. So uh, that's pretty important to make sure that all your clearances you know, are working the way they should. So same thing, just get close, drag and drop it in. If you miss, it's actually easier to just delete it and put it back in. All right, this guy is actually upside down, so I'm gonna right click it and drag and do little circles till I flip it around. And for the most part, I probably would totally mate this thing to where it doesn't move, but uh, since this is a demo, I'm just gonna kind of get it close. And that looks pretty good. All right, now I need to uh, put these two together. Again, we're gonna stack them. So I'm just gonna use some regular mates. So make the tops. And we'll line them up. Should be the last one. All right, and then we can kind of position these guys where they need to be. So I'm gonna line them up uh, somewhere around there. That should be good. All right, now that I have all those done, um, now it's just uh, creating the, uh, the the tubing for it. Now on some of these, uh, so I can see the R point on there, I'm not being able to pick up the C point on there, but if you do select on the, the file, it'll highlight it over here in the browser tree. And then underneath the, uh, the straight fitting, we can find the C point. So I just kind of showing you this because there are occasions where people uh, do add them to the assembly, sometimes they don't. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the route uh, at that C point. So we should get a little stub coming off of there. So I'm gonna do this one as flexible hose. Now if I wanted to break this down, I could do each of these as individual uh, segments, but for the most part, I'm just gonna do it all as, as one whole thing. So I'm just gonna say, okay. Give that a couple seconds. And then I need to, uh, this is gonna link directly to uh, this. Did I hit the okay? Yeah, I gotta hit the green checkbox. There we go. All right, uh, then I need this component. So the straight fitting, just gonna add that to the, uh, the route. So he has a stub on there. And when we're doing tubing, we can kind of do the same thing. I could just drag this up and drag it over. Uh, we do have the ability to do auto route. So if I just do auto route and I pick the two endpoints, it will automatically route those. So pretty simple. Okay, then I need to add some more components. So let's go get this one. And we'll add to route. Same thing with this guy, find it C point, add route. All right, so I've got some route stubs. Um, they're gonna connect to these guys down here. And these I can also, I can actually see the, the C points and add route. The reason why I can is because this is actually inserted as a, an assembly. So the C points do need to be created as assembly C points, and then they're gonna be visible at the assembly level there. And I gotta be able to, it looks, maybe did I get it? Let's add a route and see if it did it. Yep, it did get it. All right, so we also need to get this one over here. So I've got the stubs coming off that. Let's go grab this C point. 
And I want these guys to be real long. And uh, I'm gonna hit the tab key to hide the, uh, the wall so I can pick back behind these things. All right, now I should be able to drag them. And again, if I want them to be real long, maybe I just need to put a dimension on it. So I'm gonna right click, drag, get my uh, smart dimension there. And it looks like I'm in millimeters. I can put in, maybe it's uh, supposed to be 10 inches. And same thing, I'll make this one 10 inches. So I need to uh, change my, my routing template uh, to where it's using inches, and then I'll be good to go. All right, I've got almost everything. Uh, I do need the C points for the actuator. So we'll add these to the route as well. All right, now for the fun part. Uh, instead of using out a route, a lot of times I will use the spline command. You'll see it does almost the exact same thing as auto route, but the difference is this actually has handles. So if you're needing to uh, change the handles up or something, then uh, you know this may actually be a little bit better uh, tool for, for doing it. And I'll show you a reason in just a bit. All right, we need to uh, line up these two. And then these two. And again, kind of drag around, make sure they're not hitting. Everything's looking good. It's looking pretty nice and clean. All right, then in this little area, I need um, I need to alternate these. So I need some, uh, some T's. I'm gonna go to my library. And inside of uh, tubing, tube fittings, I'll see the uh, SolidWorks branch. T there, and I'll drag and drop that in. So there's one, just need to do one more. Oops, doesn't look like I grabbed it. Let me, uh, accidentally double clicked it. Let's close out of that. There we go, drag and drop. And again, hit the tab key, that'll flip at 90 degrees. Uh, I'm not worried about the direction, they need to uh, connect up to these things. Because all I have to do is just drag the uh, the line here to the opposite side, and then it'll automatically flip that, that T. And then I can kind of get them close and line them up. Uh, again, if I wanted to, I could put a dimension on them. But these have to alternate, so I'm going to use the spline command. Uh, this one close to the wall is going to go the one away from the wall, and kind of vice versa. Go from this endpoint to this one. Now, in this case, you can kind of see that they're they're touching, but because I'm using the spline command, I can just simply drag one of the handles out and make sure they're not touching. So those are looking looking pretty good. Uh, if you need to, these are just a spline. So you could just uh, right click, say insert a spline point, place a spline point wherever you need it. And then you can right click on the point and say show sketch or triad. And then you could actually drag and drop this using the triad. And of course it's a triad. So you see all three different directions, X, Y, and Z. So a couple of different ways you can uh, automate that. All right, and that looks pretty good. That looks like I got everything done. So we'll finish out of the sketch. It's gonna create all those as tubes. Um, there's a specific thickness of the, uh, of the wall. And I think uh, for the most of them, they're all using a quarter inch tube, flexible tubing. All right, with that, finish out of the uh,
the assembly. We'll go ahead and collapse all the items here. Turn my floor and wall back on. And then if I needed to, I could, you know, insert this into its own subassembly and then create its own little drawing uh, 3D model off of that. Go ahead and turn off my connection points, my C points. And that looks pretty good. So some pretty good 2D, some pretty awesome 3D. Let's hit the save button. We'll go back to the uh so I'm gonna I'm actually gonna do one more thing before I go back to 2D. So I'm gonna go ahead and save all this. And we're gonna close completely out of the 3D side. There we go. And then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close out of the project on the 3D side. So now the project is not not open at all. But uh, what I want to do is uh, this top level drawing, if I just double click on it, I can actually see it. You can see it inserted it because it did three or through electrical, it tried to put the uh, the title block on there. I'm just going to go ahead and remove the, uh, the title block. Because it still had the, the title block from the 3D side. So this looks good. And I may want to drag and drop this into my uh, 2D or my, my number two PNID stuff. Uh, this, number 10, let's go ahead and put the bill of materials all up together. Uh, this is electrical schematic, so it's easier to just say renumber, let's recalculate. So, you know, it's 6, 7, 10, 8, 9. So I'm just going to say OK. So now it's good. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Everything's looking the way it should. Uh, same thing, maybe I want to renumber these documents. So four, five, six. So that looks good. And I've got kind of my mechanical side. I've got the uh, the control PNID for the uh, the schematic side. And then of course we can export this to a PDF. And I'll just put this on my desktop. And we'll tell it to update all the drawings. So give that a couple seconds. All right, and then it's going to open up a uh, an Explorer window. It popped up on my second screen, but there it is. So there's my uh, my PDFs of my my first book, which is most of my electrical side. my bill of materials. And then the cool thing is this is on my 2D side. So there's my schematic there. Uh, you'll see that we do have hyperlinks going from, if I wanna go from four six, I click on that, it takes me exactly to that page and where that, that uh, thing is. We can zoom out if we want. Um, and then let's go to the next sheet. So there's my um, pneumatic. And notice that this was a SolidWorks 3D drawing and because I added it to my project, then it automatically adds it to the PDF without even having SOLIDWORKS 3D open. So that's kind of a nice little new feature for uh, 2022. All right, so hopefully you guys saw some, some really good automation. Uh, that pretty much finishes out my demonstration side of, of this. So everything I've done here today can be uh, taught to you guys. So we do have a classroom training, online training. Uh, we can do custom on-site training if you need us to. So uh, just you know, let us know what you want and we'll figure out about how much time it costs to do what you need to do and, and then we'll uh, provide those services. Our Go Engineer offices, we're pretty much all the way from uh, Eastern Seaboard to Western Seaboard. So the good thing for that is that uh, for me, I'm in Central Standard Time. So you, I would have tech support from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. It's pretty, pretty awesome. So we have offices everywhere to help you. Uh, we can provide any of the services that you need to, to help get your job done. And of course, our job at Go Engineer is to, you know, make you smarter, make you be able to do your job faster and get your jobs out quicker. Uh, we also provide services for PDM and electrical. 
So those databases can actually talk together. And uh, we also do a CAD automation and some other services as well. So don't forget to sign up to our uh, email newsletter. And uh, again, we do have a website for training. Our training schedule is on there if you wanna do public training or just get in touch with us for the, uh, the custom on-site training if you need. And we do have a lot of videos out there for YouTube. Uh, this webinar will be on YouTube a little bit later. So uh, we, we can send you a link if you need to. All right, so these were the uh, the webinar series. So some of the 2D we kind of skipped over pretty pretty quickly because that's in its own webinar. Uh, then we we took the 2D schematic stuff and did some 3D design with it. So that was the integrated electrical. And then of course this was the last of the series PNID with SolidWorks Electrical. All right. All right, there were a couple questions. Uh, well, one question and one comment through the chat there. Um, one was, um, which you answered already, which was a uh, link to this video, How I Might View, it just showed up a little bit late. So um, that will be available on YouTube. Um, and then someone else had a um, comment of in a perfect world. So I would assume that'd be um, against the routing. <laughs> everything everything working perfectly the first time <laughs> yeah that and that again that's there's a lot of you know the libraries to set up and uh a lot of making sure that that things are kind of in the right order so they do do work correctly in a perfect world but um that is the thing is on the demos you know you, you guys see this nice 45 minute demo and it works perfectly but you didn't see the you know five hours ahead of time of setting up the models setting it up making sure that it works right. So, you know, and it is the libraries. Once the libraries are set up, then you do have a, a extremely more perfect world. But it, I will tell you, if the libraries are not set up correctly, uh, it, it can be, it can be a lot of, a lot of work. Now you're pretty much just playing, you know, with dumb blocks, you know, you might as well just be using AutoCAD or something. Um, another question would be uh, where, um, what do you get parts from and then how much work does it take to get them intelligent? So there are some parts on the uh, SolidWorks electrical uh, content portal. So you can download some directly from them. Uh, some of the, the parts that you saw on the pneumatics, those, uh, some of them came directly from McMaster car. And then uh, the muffler, for instance, maybe took me three or four minutes. All I had to do uh, because there's no C points on there, I didn't have to worry about the connection points for a tube. Uh, we could just put a, a mate reference on there, put it in the library. Uh, and then it did take me about a minute, minute and a half to create a manufacturer part and make sure some of that information was filled out and then point it to that, that SOLIDWORKS library. So that that did take a little bit of time, but it wasn't wasn't crazy amount of time. Uh, most of the stuff should come directly from the manufacturer website. That's that's what I would prefer, though. Uh, that way, you make sure that you're getting, you know, what that guy is building is is what you get. Um, and then the library on the 2D side, can there be um, custom symbols created? Uh, definitely. Yeah. Any any of the library components, uh, you know, it's not a powerful tool unless it's customizable. So. It, any kind of custom symbols you can of course create uh, anything on the 3d if you can model it up you can you know add that to your library and, and reuse it over and over again as well and then for doing like with the p and id and everything what training would be required or suggested to be able to do that so uh on the uh it, it the name of the product is solidworks routing so routing comes with SOLIDWORKS Premium, and it, it's actually two different, uh, we do piping and tubing. So you would probably have to take the, the training for piping and tubing. So it's a day on, day on piping and a day on tubing, I believe. It, actually, I take it back, maybe one day and we're doing both piping and tubing. I'll have to look at the, uh, the website for that. And that was it. All right, perfect. All right, well, 
don't see any other questions in the queue. So uh, I'm glad you guys were able to uh, come out and take take some of your lunch and hopefully get a little bit nerdy with Go Engineer. And Mallory, thanks for the Q&A. Of course. And Melanie, thanks for hopping on on the sales side. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. All right, thanks guys.